Hello, it's Stephen King Day at my house today. I've got in the mail from a publisher named PS Publishing a what I uh, what I hope to be is a limited edition copy of Cujo. And when I look back in my uh, my memory banks, Cujo is probably my very first exposure to Stephen King, to the great Stephen King. Um, I can't remember exactly where, but I went somewhere with my parents to somebody's house visiting friends of theirs. I was pretty young and on the TV with their kids were watching a movie called Cujo and I watched this movie about a uh, uh, St. Bernard who uh, got bit on the nose by a bat and uh, therefore went on a roaring rampage all over town. Um, that was my first exposure that I recall uh, to Stephen King. Uh, first literary exposure, the first Stephen King book I ever read uh, I think it was 91, my freshman or freshman year at high school, and I was reading some required assigned reading during uh, lunch, sitting in the quad, reading, um, I think it was actually what turns out to be one of my favorite books of all time, A Last Babylon by Pat Frank, uh, because I didn't want to read the book at home, so I was going to use my school time to try to get that joker read in time for test day. And a buddy of mine came up and said, what are you reading? I said this. He said, why are you reading that? Why don't you read something good like Stephen King? And I said, like, what? Um, and he hands me a paperback copy of The Stand. Big, thick uh, book, lots of pages, stuff like that. He hands me the paperback copy. I said, all right, I've heard of Stephen King, but I don't know anything about him. Uh, he says, you'll like it. It's great. And um, within a day or two, I started into that book, um, reading about uh, the release of a virus uh, and reading about people's personal lives before bad things started happening and I was immediately in I I couldn't I'd never read anything that got me into people's lives and minds and thoughts uh, like that book did uh, so I loved the book um, a lot a lot of people have their thoughts about how it ended and I won't get into that but anyway I, I really dug it and uh, um, like most people I'm a fan I'm not a big Stephen King collector because when I started collecting books, decided I wanted signed limited editions, I looked around and Stephen King stuff was very expensive at the time. It still is. It's even more expensive now than ever. So I never wanted to compete with all of the millions of fans to try to buy these limited edition or, or uh, now old first print, first edition books. I didn't want to compete. Didn't have the money to compete, so I didn't. Um, so I began collecting other stuff. PS Publishing is a publisher out of the UK, which I, uh, I dig a lot. I, I think my first exposure to them was um, Joe Lansdale's Edge of Dark Water, a signed and numbered edition I got of that book in a slipcase, and I thought it looked great. Uh, so I, I like them, and I've bought some, some of their books over time since then. Well, I got an email or something talking about a limited edition, a copy of Cujo, limited to 1,000 coming out. And they were going to have a, a rollout where you could order at this time on this day or this time on this day. I don't remember how it all went. But I said, oh, neat. I probably won't be able to get it. But anyway, I put it in my calendar, put it in my uh, uh, a timer. So when the order time come around, I'd be reminded to go online and try to get one in. And uh, the timer went off and I was heading somewhere. And luckily, my wife was driving and I was riding in the passenger seat this time. So... I was able to fool around on my phone, fiddle around, able to get the book ordered. And uh, fast forward to this date, here we are. The book is in place. Um, I, I saw on a, a Facebook group somebody talking about, showed a picture of their box. And the first thing I noticed was it was bashed in pretty badly. And they put on here, uh, fragile, do not crush. I don't know where I heard it from, but I heard long ago, it was probably a comedian or something saying, if you want to make sure your stuff doesn't get damaged in the mail, don't put the word fragile on it anywhere because that means it will be damaged. And uh, so I've kind of kept that in the back of my mind. Well, it wasn't too long ago. I mailed a book. I told the lady, it's a book. I want to send it media mail. She pulled out her stamp and stamped fragile right on the top. And I said, oh, and she said, what? And I said, is it too late to get insurance on that? She said no. So anyway, I got it insured. I've, I've always had that in the back of my head. My box says fragile, do not crush. And it's taken a little bit of a, a pounding. I've seen uh, worse copies uh, or worse results of this book online. But it almost would stand to reason that this, maybe at the Christmas time, uh, is a uh, 
an indicator of what might happen next. But they package their stuff well, and we'll see how it looks when we open it up. So let's take a look, get her opened up forthwith, and see what we see. Um, this book is supposed to be signed by the artist Chad Claiborne and the person who writes the introduction, the introductor, uh, Sarah Penborough. And I've, uh, I've actually read Sarah Penborough uh, in conjunction with F. Paul Wilson. Surely I won't be able to find it while I'm looking for it, but she did one, uh, um, A Necessary End, right here with F. Paul Wilson. Very good. This one was published <coughs> by Maelstrom, signed a limited edition book. But that's my reading exposure to Sarah Penborough. Um, she's also, you might have heard from her from Netflix. Uh, there's a TV series, a Netflix adaptation of one of her books, Behind, Behind Her Eyes, I think is what it's called. Um, and I also believe that perhaps she's, maybe I'm wrong. She might have been a, a screenwriter for that show. I don't remember. Anyway, she wrote the book that the series was adapted upon. Here's, uh, here's what I got so far from PS Publishing, some ripped up cardboard, bubble wrap on top of bubble wrap. I'm hoping for the best. I got a little bit of bash in my box, but maybe we've come out all right, and we'll see. Lots of padding, which is good. Man, if you're, uh, if you're shipping books, especially if you're a publisher of limited edition books, package that stuff up nicely. There's a couple publishers that I really like, other than the fact that they put their books in a box that's about the same size as the book with no padding at all, and any little ding that's going to happen on the box during shipping gets transferred right to the book. But I'm talking about other stuff. Let's see what we got. And this, uh, this slip case feels awesome. It's very slick. Um, maybe you can see that. It's slick and shiny. Here's the, uh, the back of our slip case, and here's the artwork. Chad Claiborne artwork on the slip case and when you put this book on the shelf here's what you see Cujo Stephen King PS publishing I always like their I typically like the way their books look on the shelf there's our cover art you've probably seen pictures of this online uh, it's here there everywhere it's got a ribbon installed you can see it there there's our spine again let me take off this dust jacket and see what it looks like underneath and pretty neat we've got the artwork also on the book itself and it wraps around to the spine which has no artwork i mean it has artwork but it has no writing no title no no author and then again to the back so this book looks awesome it looks awesome without the dust jacket. Maybe, uh, maybe the terrific one needs to buy another one to put on the shelf so he can have it without, uh, without a dust jacket. Maybe that's in the plans. We'll see how much I can buy one for on the secondary market. We'll see. And right to our, uh, our signature page. This signature page almost makes you giddy. I almost say, what? I almost jump up and down. And, uh, and lose my breath until you see a word called facsimile. What that means, I don't know. I just read. I don't know what words are. Uh, facsimile, uh, signature of Stephen King. At least it makes the signature page look, look more complete, perhaps, seeing Stephen King's name on there. But I got my copy in, signed by Sarah Penborough, we talked about, signed by Glenn Chadbourne, the artist. Uh, Chad Glenborn, Glenn Chadbourne. Signed by Glenn Chadbourne, the artist. And our signature page does look terrific. It looks good. The end papers, I didn't show you that. Our end papers have artwork. You've got the dog chasing a rabbit. And I like, uh, I always like having artwork on the end papers. Makes it feel, oh, this one's good. This one's real good. Breaking Bad on the Cujo. A swing teeing, teeing up here. Uh, there's, I, when this book was first announced, uh, with the artwork, there were people chiming in about the artist. Um, some people saying the art looks great. Some people saying the art looks terrible. Some people saying they love Glenn Chadbourne. They don't love Glenn Chadbourne. 
but I don't see how you could say the art is terrible. And there's a lot of it in here. It looks good. Everything I see looks good. And when I have this book in hand, I am no doubt far more happy with it than I was on the day I placed the order. And there's no way I could get all these. I, I flipped through a few pages and I'm passing up artwork. There's This thing is just chock full of pictures. Uh, like I said, there's no way I could possibly, I, I, don't, I didn't look to see how many pictures there are in here, but I've passed through a bunch of them just trying to get the one. Pictures throughout. And you can see I'm, I'm just getting started in here. So the artwork is phenomenal. Uh, we all know, or a lot of us know, what to expect from the book. And uh, that probably won't be a surprise. Um, but what, uh, what most of us, I think, are interested in is what is PS Publishing putting in your hands when that book comes into the mailbox. And I can say, uh, this guy can say 100%ly, I vouch for it. I vouch for them. I vouch for this copy. I'm glad that I got one on day one, and I'm glad I'm not having to pay secondary market prices, 200 and something, 300 and something, whatever they're gonna be charging for this stuff on the secondary market. I'm glad I, I was able to avoid that in this case. Got a little bit lucky, and man, I, I haven't seen a picture yet that I couldn't say was awesome. And I'm not gonna flip through every one, Maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't. Maybe you've already tuned out. Are you there? What do you think? Should I flip through every one? That's some of the artwork. And gosh, it smells good. It smells like a book, man. Uh, uh, it doesn't smell like the old-fashioned library book that's been sitting on the shelves for years, which is my favorite smell on this earth. And it doesn't smell like a chemically smell like you get might get from... Some publishers, it has a terrific smell. If you're in the book smells, this one should be a candle that you light up. And I'm maybe a little over halfway through, and it's just artwork after artwork after artwork. Glenn Chadbourne stayed busy getting ready for this book. And it looks like the second half is more artwork than words almost, not really. But picture after picture, I've skipped a bunch of them just flipping through. So you get a lot of artwork. You get... A book of boards covered in artwork that wraps all the way around. Um, you get uh, a couple of cool signatures on a limitation page and a facsimile signature of Stephen King. I think maybe for aesthetics, it makes the signature page look better. It's a Stephen King book. You got signatures on it. You got a, something that looks like a Stephen King signature. And they're not passing it off as real. There is a publisher out there a well-loved publisher that'll put a facsimile stick signature on a signature page. And a lot of people who aren't really uh, studying up think they have a signature of the author and they don't, it's a fake, it's a facsimile. Um, but at least these folks here are marking it as such. So they're, they're not getting people's hopes up like mine when I first saw it, I was getting this for a split second till I saw the, the words underneath. Um, should you buy Stephen King's Cujo? I guess, uh, I guess the answer would be, if you think you might want it, yes. You're not going to be, uh, I'm not disappointed when I look at it, and I can't imagine you would be either. This book uh, looks great. It's going to go on a spot next to some of my other favorite Stephen Kings. I don't have the, don't have the best of the best, but I got the books that I like and copies of the books that I like that I want, and this one goes in there with them. So uh, great job, P.S. Publishing. Uh, naturally, great job, Stephen King, and I uh, hope you get one if you want one. Hope you don't have to pay too uh, too much for it. And that's all. That's all I got to say. I can't think of any more lies to tell. So, say la vie, baby.